Anything in the world, what you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim, we met once before very briefly, as we say in Texas, a quick howdy. Mm -hmm. Quick howdy. <laughs> in, in, in the elevator. Uh, at the time, I had not seen the picture. I mm -hmm. was on my way to see the picture. Mm -hmm. Although I, I heard people talking about saying, wow, some kind of picture. It was the most extraordinary experience because I can't remember the last time I saw a movie where the audience clapped five or six times. Is this the kind of reaction you've been getting? Well, uh, I don't know if, uh, presumably we weren't at the same screening, but I've only seen the film with an audience once, and they were very responsive to the film, which is, which is fun for me. That's, that's what keeps me going. And this is, this is not the easiest work, as, as you might imagine. Uh, basically, sort of, it's taken me a year and a half out of my life, and I mean right out of my life, <laughs> to, do this, to do this film. And that's the payoff when, when, when I see people respond that way to a movie. That's the, that's the fun part. Jim, I'm going to share something with you, and I had a little reluctance about whether or not I should, but I, well, I will anyway. When I saw Alien, and mm -hmm. I reviewed it, mm -hmm. I said, <laughs> it just came out, that I, I was totally grossed out by the first mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. uh, maybe because it was such a new experience, whatever. Right. Anyway, I said in my review, now if you still insist on seeing this movie, and I gave it great marks for filmmaking, etc., mm -hmm. but I said, if you still insist on, on seeing this gross movie, you better take along a barf bag and an extra pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, the line has haunted me. Uh -huh. but Are you going to say that about this film? What I'm going to say about this film is, you better take along a paramedic is what I'm going to say. <laughs> wow. Well, we, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but we, we tried, to, in, we, we tried to, to make a film that was as good as the first film without being as gross as the first film. And to do that, we had to offer something in its place, which was an excitement factor or, a, or an exhilaration or something else, some other emotion. Uh, and uh, I personally like action served up you know, nice and, and hard and lean and fast, and that's what that's what we tried to do. And I'd say the last last thirty minutes of the film uh, pretty much de delivers in that in that area. So I think that if people expect this to be as as gory as or, or gorier than the first film, if that was was bothersome to them, I don't think it will affect them as much uh, on the, uh, in this film. For those that demand that. I think they'll be distracted by other things, and they'll forget about that. That's my that's my my fond hope, anyway. Also, in this movie, you have extraordinary hardware, uh, weapons, um, explosions, fire. I mean, it's just you know, it's like World War Three up there on the screen. <laughs> and then Sigourney, the stuff that she does with the weapon. Mm -hmm. Now, was Sigourney? at all reluctant to do that stuff with the gun? Well, Sigourney herself as a person doesn't like guns. And I, I understand that and I, I respect that. The reason that, that she didn't have uh, a problem with it as, as an actor in this film is because she wasn't shooting at people. I think it would be very hard for her to do a scene where um, she was a, a, you know, in, a, in a combat situation with, uh, with other, other people. But here she's fighting this, this elemental alien force, these, these things, basically. And the, it, it doesn't have the same moral connotation, I don't think, even though the imagery is the same. There she is with the machine gun, so to speak. But, uh, and that's, that's why it worked, it worked for her as, as, an, as an actress. When I saw those fires and everything, I thought, my gosh, Pinewood's insurance must have gone up a thousand percent. Well, some of, some of, the, of the, the hairier uh, effects were done on location in a, um, an abandoned uh, power station. And it was made completely out of uh, steel and concrete. And we were able to, to go pretty much hog wild with the, uh, with the pyrotechnics. And also a lot of it was done in miniature and hopefully the, the blend off between the full size and the miniatures is, is smooth enough that you don't always know what you're seeing. But uh, Pinewood, of course, is nervous about fire in general because they, their uh, big bond stage, which is the, was their pride and joy, burned down uh, a year or two ago. So I was a little worried about that when we went in there because I knew what we were going to be doing. They said the pyros are back. <laughs> the pyros, the pyromaniacs are back. <laughs> 
Um, I'm wondering if uh, Aliens 3 is in the typewriter. No, oh, not for me, it's not. Uh, I think Fox will want to see how this film does and if they're still enthusiastic about, or if they become enthusiastic about, about a continuation beyond the film that, uh, that Gail and I made, then they'll have to pursue that in their way, meaning find a writer, find a director, because we'll be on to something else, I think, some new territory. But if the money were right... No, I don't think so. At, at this point, you know, the way, the way I work on films and the way my wife, who, who produced this film, works, we throw ourselves into, into the picture right from pre-production through the end of post-production. It takes us a year to a year and a half to do a film, and that means that maybe a career will, will only be 10 or 12 films. You can't stay in the same, doing the same thing over and over again. Jim, who has influenced your style of directing in the look of your films? And, and I'm thinking mostly, of course, of, of Terminator in this mm -hmm. film. So what's been the influence, or who has been the influence? It's, it's hard to narrow down. I mean, you, I, I think that, that wa watching any film, no matter how good or how bad, you learn things about how to use a camera, um, <clears throat> you know how to how to work with actors. I mean, you can watch a John Cassavetes film for for emotional interaction, or or a Bergman film, or or a Hitchcock film, or a Spielberg film, and learn something from from all of them. And I think to try and limit it to a to a specific person as an influence is is not. Uh, um, it's too, it's too limiting. It's hard for me to answer that question. I would say that if I wanted to emulate someone, it would be somebody like Steven Spielberg, who, who somehow captures a little bit of, of humanity and uh, and a childlike quality uh, in all his films. I don't know if my films resemble his films. I don't think they do. They're a little, you know, they tend to be a little more intense. I mean, you know, a little a little grittier, but. Um, Anyway, I I, I, res, I respect the, his his movies, but I, I like I like a lot of a lot of different filmmakers. Well, again, congratulations! I think you have a monumental hit on your hands, and uh, for a person who is not just a, a science fiction addict, mm -hmm. I enjoyed it tremendously. Good, I really did. Thank you. That's the best compliment. If yeah. you're not a fan of the genre, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean I put it down. Always. Or not a fanatic. But not a fanatic, right? Mm -hmm. Jim, nice talking with you. I really enjoyed meeting you, and also I enjoyed talking with Gail. Thank you very much. Could you hold tape, please, TC? We'll do. Oh, okay. Uh.